Awesome! Isn't it amazing? So am I just like, hi myself? No, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So apart from um, you know, just hearing about all of the stories, um, no, apart from hearing about all the products and then you know what's really interesting is their personal story. These people come from a bunch of different nationality and also different professions. So let's invite all of the, the grads up on stage when we do a panel discussion. Are, are you all comfortable now? Okay, can you check if the mic is on? Because I'm really not sure. Say something. Hi. Yeah, it's on. <laughs> okay, so um, just quickly go down the line. Tell us your name. Tell us what you were, you were doing before the, pro the, before the program. Ting Tian can start. Hi everyone, my name is Ting Tian. I'm currently working as a customer service officer in My Republic. So basically, because my republic is just a new style, so I basically do all the things. I do buildings, I do order, I do technical. But <laughs> my technical knowledge, uh, knowledge is basically on uh, hardware, like modem, router, yeah. So I just started to learn coding, yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Kate. I used to be a stewardess. Then I did sales. I was very jaded. I quit my job. And I was very free, so I signed up for 10 ladies. And it was <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I think it was just the right place, right time thing. Yeah, and also because one of my friends who's sitting there also taught me how to uh, use WordPress. And I thought, um, you know, it's about time to do some, like, you know, learn coding. And right now I'm uh, pursuing a. <laughs> I'm an uh, intern. Uh, probably the oldest intern in the world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at Tinkerbox, which is a web development agency, and they do great work. Hello, everyone. I'm Sandy. I'm a Taiwanese, and I'm a air stewardess now. And I used to be a sales administrator in ASUS Computers, a very famous Taiwanese brand. And uh, I started to call maybe like uh, half a year ago, I, because I want to build something by myself. And uh, thanks for Tech Lady program. I have a little bit skills, and now I'm helping uh, African NGO to build their uh, commercial uh, e-commerce online. So uh, I hope I'm very excited about that. Uh, because of Tech Lady, uh, at first I thought I just can donate some money to them, but now <laughs> I, I feel I have the abilities to we really still help need them. the money, you know. <laughs> Not only money, I can uh, dedicate my time and build something with them together. Thank you. Hi, I'm Cornette. I used to be a student at the Ohio State University in the States. And then uh, I was studying chemical engineering and I got really sick of it. And I decided to take a gap year. And then I found Tinkerbox, the company that she's interning at. Um, a web development agency is awesome company. And then um, they gave me an opportunity to, to intern there and I got to, know, got to learn some coding there and then I improved a lot there. And then I found Tech Ladies as well and then gave me even more opportunity to code. And I'm going to be, become a full-time, not a developer yet, it was a customer service but developer route position at Honesty next Monday. Hello everyone, my name is Yixing and I was a linguistics student. So um, it appears that I might have done something pretty irrelevant, but I did UX design, I did a little bit of graphic design, and I write a lot. So I was actually in this um, school computing module prior to joining this, and I was there as a UX designer. Yeah, so um, I think it's really cool to learn back end because I worked with so many really cool computing students from NUS and they were just really really cool so I just really wanted to learn something so cool as well and my mentor is just laughing at me right now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Casey Milhouse Singh. I am the head gymnastics coach and program director at the Singapore American School um, where I've developed a curriculum that gives children success at all levels. Um, I, I guess I started coding um, to fix my own blog about I don't know, four years ago. Um, and during the summer, that's when I started really getting into coding, right? Yeah. 
Um, so I would stay up late at night and do things on Code Academy and try to teach myself. Um, Ruby was, was the um, language that I, I resonated with because it was cute. Um, and one of my gymnasts name was Ruby, so um, that's why I started. Um, but actually when um, I got accepted to Tech Ladies, that's actually when a lot of things like started moving into motion. And um, I'm the founder of a, a company called Leela Pass. So we help parents discover um, their child's passion and develop their interests so they can live incredibly fulfilling lives. Hi, I'm Erica. I work as a management consultant. Um, currently working, as I said, I um, at a an online platform. So it helps people to buy and sell iron ore online, um, which is pretty interesting. It's actually the biggest platform uh, in the world, but one of two. <laughs> so. So they actually use Python, which is the language that um, Eating um, and I and Vina used to um, to make the AFA web uh, submissions, um, and and it's interesting to see see actually for me I, I started learning a little bit on Code Academy and and found um, some websites that taught Python, but I wasn't really sure how to apply it. Uh, so understanding how it actually kind of fits together in Tech Ladies was really really uh, good for me. Yeah. All right. Um, so what, before I move on to the next question, just want to let all of you know that there will be a Q&A after this. So as you know that these ladies, they come from super diverse backgrounds and you know, different levels of awesomeness. So do start thinking about questions that you can ask later. So now, move back to the panel. So I want to find, so all of you have experiences in programming before the program either through Code Academy or you know learning other stuff like Sandy built her own blog before that so to take me back take me back you know, before the program so why or how did you fall in love with programming like why did you even start uh, so something that really attracted me was the concept that um, in programming was I guess uh, a language that's based on logic and so I saw it as a chance to quite nerdily uh, look at it from a problem solving point of view so I thought that would be interesting um, just to keep that part of that brain working. I guess I, I, I don't know I, I really like social media <laughs> to be honest um, and I was like really interesting and, and I was really interested in understanding a little bit more why things work or how they work um, and that um, I think that like spurred the um, the initial interest in in me to learn programming for me I have been playing with HDMI and CSS since I was really young so it was kind of like a blog that nobody knows about but I was just very anal you know, about keeping the template, the way I wanted it. So um, I think at my age, blogskins.com was very popular, but there was just nothing that I really liked. So I like to steal code and paste it everywhere. So I just want to make my own monster out of all the code that people have. So um, like I said just now, I took the computing module. I met a lot of really cool guys. And I so I, I know more front end stuff, more creative stuff like design. And then they, they are just always talking about the back end stuff, like the big stuff, like, um, tables, how things work, and I just never knew what it was saying at all. So I just really felt that I really want to know what's going on and how how they can just use alphabets, use numbers, use symbols to just create an application out of something that seems like nothing. Well, for me, I was lucky enough to take an introduction in programming class back in Ohio State, and then um, I realized that I get to, it's like writing an essay, but into something that works, which was really, really cool. And then um, I tried writing some accounting program for myself. I was like, hey, this is fun. But because I was a chemical engineering student, I have my priorities, so I have to like relocate my time to like studying for my chemical engineering stuff. But after I decided to take a gap year, my friend told me to, oh, you can actually try some coding thing in Code Academy or something. I was like, okay, that's fun. 
And I tried and I realized, hey, so this is how websites like Facebook come out. Like this is where it came from. Like then yeah, I found I should like do something more about it. The reason I started to code is actually I I never thought of coding related to me uh, before. But uh, once I read uh, an article named uh, Software is e Eating Your World, maybe some people read about that. And then a lot of my friends, no matter their major is, maybe they're major in finance or civil engineering, they started to learn computer science. And then they even threatened me like, you know, uh, coding is like another language, just like English. If in the future you, you don't know how to code, it's, it's like you don't know how to speak English. You don't know how to communicate with others. And then I feel, is it so serious? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm thinking, oh my god, so, so serious. Maybe I should know something about that. And so I started to maybe talk to more friends and attend more uh, meet up and then, uh, and then meet some people. So I think actually to create something by yourself, no matter it's just the small, small little things to make your work more efficient, make you, uh, make you feel more confident about yourself and make, make you feel, oh, I have the superpower to create something. Uh, maybe it's just very simple, but sometimes it can fulfill yourself and, uh, and make you feel like, oh, I can, I'm able to talk to computer. So it's quite a cool thing for me. Thank you. <laughs> um, how many of you guys here can code something? Huh. Okay. Yeah, so um maybe you say twenty percent, right? Yeah. So if you're wondering like you know if you do have any background in programming or um maybe even like using WordPress, like you know, what are you here for or why? Um I mean, for me, it started out because uh, I was very bored like when I was flying and wanted to sell something to get extra cash. So then that, that was like, you know, out of a need, something that you want. And I always, I think like, you know, technology is always a means to an end. Yeah, so when I was flying as well, I was thinking like, oh, it's so hard to change my flights to someone else. I mean, because the system uh, that uh, Singapore Airlines use is very like, you know, it's internal system. Yeah, so there must be a way to like match your flight so you can change flights to someone else. Like there's always, always a need behind technology. And, um, and I guess for me, it's always from that, you know, the starting point is always a need. Yeah, and I think it's very empowering to learn how to code because you can satisfy that need yourself. Yeah. Um, when I first started to do coding, I was just uh, doing it out of fun. So I didn't really put in much effort until there's one time I actually participate in one uh, hackathon with my friends. Okay, so while everyone is building like coding continuously for like, 24 hours, I think I sleep a lot because I don't want to code at all. So my job there is just to yeah pitch. That's all. So but during the presentation, I see how how the uh, participants actually present the things that they have created in that 24 hours. It's just very amazing. So I I tell myself I say the next time I come to another hackathon, I must be the one that could. I don't want to just, you know, go there and then look at people and then sleep and then eat and then drink. Yeah. <laughs> so I after that I started to put in a lot of efforts and I realized that uh, coding actually changed the way I face problems. For example, previously if let's say I face an issue in work, I would just uh, complain, like complain with colleagues, like why is it this system sucks? Why is it must use so many Excel's? It's so troublesome. So now when I the same issue appear, what I would think is that no, I'm gonna just create something to each my own pain. So yeah, my boss is not paying me for doing that, but I still yeah, I want to improve my own workflow. Awesome. So I think that in all of your journey learning how to code, this is definitely not an easy task. So what is like the hardest hardest hurdle or obstacle you the biggest trouble you face while you're learning how to code? Mm, I think the main issue I'm facing is probably building up my basic. 
because a lot of times I realize that I do not have a very good basic. That's why I have a lot of troubles uh, in understanding how code works. Sometimes I can just code out the things and it works, and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm still working hard on this part. Yeah, I think sometimes the understanding comes like a bit later. You just have to push through for for a while. Yeah, and um, probably the other thing is also asking for help and um, knowing where to find help. Yeah, so um, like a community like this and having mentors really does help. Yeah. Oh yeah, for the Ruby meetup as well. Oh, later, later. later. Yeah. <laughs> I think the most difficult thing I encounter is flying and coding at the same time. <laughs> it's super tiring. Imagine if you don't sleep for more than 24 hours and then after you arrive at a very beautiful place maybe like London and then you need to turn on your computer <laughs> face all the uh, code and then try to figure out why my code is not working now <laughs> uh, and then you're just like oh I want to sleep now but why, why should I just uh, debug and then but still need to uh, insist in doing it so because uh, it it make you feel good when you finally find out why my code is not working mm. and even you don't know why your code is working still feel good because it's working <laughs> <laughs> so it's the most challenging thing for me <sighs> for me it's indentation indentation and indentation <laughs> so much indentation the thing about coding is that you have to be really really precise or else that it won't work so I guess it kind of makes me, it kind of trains me to become more detail-oriented, make me a better person, I guess, so I guess that's good. For me, in my final semester, so I have honors classes, and then I took an extra class in Spanish. So I normally code at night, which is not very good for me because I typically sleep quite early. So um, I, I can't really see what I do when I do back-end stuff. So, Sometimes I think that it works, and then I just push it. <laughs> Martin's like, I'm surprised that it works. And then we find out that it doesn't work at all. So eventually I have to correct it, but um, because of the error that I made, I have to go a really large round to correct it. So it takes up a lot more of my time, but I guess it's difficult, but it's good for me as well, because I get to learn from that. I get to know how to not be careless anymore, and to to really check all your code before just submitting because as someone used to HTML and CSS, I like to just write and then save and then check, write, save, check. So I, I don't like to write and then have to look through each line of code and then check if there's error, check repeatedly if there's errors and then <laughs> submit it. So that was kind of problematic for me, I would say. Um, well, I'm a mother of two, so um Time is actually like the biggest struggle for me. Um, but the, the tech ladies, what, what I got the most out of it was actually the, the mentors were amazing. And I remember specifically like the first couple of weeks, Shintian and I would be on like Skype for like three hours and we're like not really talking to each other, just like <laughs> Googling things and um, trying to figure out things. So, um, you know. Because of this program, we were able to rely on each other and, and find the answers, or you know, get a little nudge. Um, you know, this is the right direction to go in or not. And uh, that was something that, you know, when you're when you're just doing Code Academy or, or trying to learn things on your own, you don't have somebody to like bounce off different ideas with. And and that is really what um, what I got most about. You know, most from this program. Um, but you know, getting back down to that to that core question for for me, it's it's actually finding the time to get everything done, and, and that's just like a general uh, <laughs> problem that I have. Uh, for me, I when people talk about coding and then they start talking more about coding, I I feel like they're speaking English. Like it sounds like English, but I I don't understand <laughs> anything that they're saying. So, you know, like, I, I mean, if you're completely new, someone says Python, that sounds like a reptile. Um, <laughs> doesn't sound like a language. And then when they say it's a language, well, it's not a language, it's a programming language. So it's just trying to wrap my head 
around all these things. And every time something sounds like a word, and I think something is actually something completely different. Um, so I think I think that's that's probably the hardest hardest bit, and also the having to be extremely precise. I think I spent a lot more time talking to Martin, asking him to tell me what the issue of my code was than the time that I spent writing it. So. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of misconception, you know, like Python as the reptile and Ruby as the gem. So are there any other misconceptions that you have about programming before you joined the program? And also, what did you realize was wrong after or during? Um, well, I just learned um, Python as a language. I, I had no idea how you would apply that language. So, so the misconception I had was that you could learn a language and then create something, but actually you need to understand how it works within something like Django, for example, to actually do something with it. Um, so that was... I think um, I really underestimated um, technology. Um, you know, like what we've built or what all the teams have built to help these NGOs is really just a small piece of, of what is happening right now. Like never in the history of the time has there been a better better time in history to take technology and solve the world's problems. And I think um, I totally underestimated the power um, that we have to make the world a better place. So that was the uh, misconception I had about technology. Similar for, um, to SKC, I thought that coding was a very static thing. You would never think that there are actually so many things you have to look out for, and it's just only going to increase, just is going to, be, going, to, going to be more stuff. So um, there are actually a lot of things to read. It's not just like, I know ABC and I'm going to use ABC for something else. I can create more things with ABC that I know. And um, I think one common misconception we have is that coding is a guy's thing. <laughs> I think we can see that from the sheer numbers of um, programmers we have in the tertiary institutions around. So I think that is a main deterrent for a lot of goals as well. Well, for me, I thought that you just have to know like one particular language and you are able to solve like many of, many of the problems. But after I started interning at Tinkerbox, I realized that you know there's like front end, there's like back end. Front end runs on like HTML, CSS, and stuff like that. And back end there's like Rails, and there's like other framework for like maybe Python or something. So it's a lot of things that you have to learn. You have to learn really quick and to solve them like as fast as possible. Yeah. The misconception I have is before I started to code. I, every time when I look at someone turn on the computer and turn on terminal and there's a black background and then they type typing something very fast and then I feel, wow, so cool. <laughs> and then I never, no, I never knew that I, I will be the one who type something very fast. <laughs> so I thought maybe only IQ 180, you can, only uh, IQ 180 you can do code. But actually it's not. <laughs> Everyone can do it, no matter your IQ is 180 or 100. Even uh, everyone's grandmother also can do that. <laughs> so uh, what I mean is, it's just, thank you. Just start from basic. Although it, uh, there will be a lot of challenge, and debug is the most difficult things, but still I feel it's not as difficult as we, uh, I imagine when I didn't try it. When you try it, it's very difficult, but it's not impossible. You remind me of when um, Gerald asked us to run something on Rails console. And I'm like, huh? What, what console? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I think, yeah, it was my first time using the terminal. I didn't know you can type something in the line and then something will happen. <laughs> so yeah, I think the misconception is um, like, you know, if you do have background in technology, is it possible to pick it up? Yeah, and, um, and there are actually a lot of resources out there. In the community, if online and offline is very strong. Like if you have a question and you know, you really can't solve it, um, you don't really have um, like someone beside you to ask, you can ask, ask it on Stack Overflow or you bug one of um, your colleagues or friends. Yeah, so that's one thing. 
Um, I think the misconception I have is actually I thought uh, people who know how to code actually memorize all the things. <laughs> so, like, I was like, well, you we can memorize everything, every command, every of the code. Then after I learned coding, I realized that yeah, there's a lot of things that actually can be auto-generated. For example, yeah, you type in real new project name, and then there will be a whole frame thing come out. And I think another very epic misconception I have is Java equal to JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I was like, tell my friend, hey, you know that Java? Then he said, no, it's JavaScript. So what? Java is just a short form of JavaScript. Right? <laughs> that's what I answered him that time. <laughs> now I know that's a different. <laughs> awesome. So now I'm gonna take a pause. And you know, is there any question from the audience? Anything that you like to ask? Let me come over to you. So first, just awesome job, everyone. I'm really impressed, and I think you guys have a lot to be proud of. So, and I think you're doing a good job inspiring people in the audience who might be considering doing the next batch or the next next batch of tech ladies. So my question for you is, what advice do you have for the people in the audience who are thinking about participating? What do you wish you knew at the beginning that you know now that you can pass on to them? Anyone can just take the question. Um, advice for anybody who wants to do tech ladies, do it, <laughs> do it. Um, I, you know, it, it's really changed a, um, a way that I think about things like in solving problems, um, but also like the teamwork aspect is really, um, you know, amazing. I think what I wish I would have known, um, I guess I, I really don't have anything that I, w I wish I would have known, but um, if you want to get started, just start today by doing anything, reading, reading, doing the tutorials online. There's really nothing stopping you from starting coding and yeah, just start. Um, maybe um, if you want to get, if you want to get started on, on um, coding or even joining Tech Ladies, um, have something in mind, like you know what what you want out of this. Um, I think for me it was more exploratory, but like uh, I was wondering whether like you know, it, it, it really does help in learning a programming skill by having something to work on. Yeah, and having something to work on is actually very important. Yeah, you know, because sometimes you, when you're learning, you you don't really implement it, and uh, yeah, you're not sure how it's supposed to like come into play. Yeah, so having something to work on, whether it's a tech ladies project or something of your own with a bunch of friends, really does help. Yeah. Um, I would say, if you guys are interested in learning Ruby and it's, you're just a beginner, you don't know anything, check out the book, um, Learn Ruby the Hard Way. I think that book is really, really good. Because if you are learning online and stuff, they're just like teaching you bit by bit and everything and it's kind of like fragmented and bits and pieces everywhere. But this book kind of put it all together and show you like a big picture of it. So it helped, helped me a lot. Um, I think that it would be useful for you to actually know some stuff about where you're going to learn. So I actually tried a bit of Ruby online. <laughs> I think I did Code, Code, Academy, Code Academy. I did a little bit on... Um, Udemy? Udemy? Yeah, so I did a little bit there, but um, eventually I went with Python because I liked AFA. I liked the idea of AFA. But um, I think if I had more experience with Python, I could actually be able to contribute more. <laughs> I think I would be able to take more high-end stuff as well, instead of um, having Martin having to go through like more basic stuff with me, because I have no experience in Python at all. And there are a lot of resources out there. There's, there are a lot of free things. You don't even need to buy anything. And there are a lot of people out there. The communities are very, very supportive, I think. Even if you're a totally new person, you can just join their Facebook page. They will just approve you, even if you're like really dubious. <laughs> so just join everything. Just try everything. And I think it would be nice to come prepared rather than just like waiting for someone to to tell you. I know it's really hard to start. I, I thought it was really hard to get started with back end especially by myself online, but um, it's really good to have some information. So learn Python the hard way is a very good book as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, any next question? Anyone? 
No? Okay, I have a question. So, I'm very curious about it. So, all of you went through this program, so where are you going to next? I know Connect, you already have a job. Kate, you're interning at Tinkerbox. So, what about the rest? What's next for you? Like, how would you use your programming skills? I don't think I'm going for a job in um, computing anytime soon because I want to be able to do something I can be proud of instead of, you know, just like trying and like trial and error and then kind of screwing things up here and there. So um, even so, I am going to help Martin with this new project, which has to do with tech ladies as well. So um, like I said just now, I thought it would be nice to be prepared. So this is a really cool um, platform for you to just learn a little bit more about these languages and try a little bit more and you can you can uh, connect with like mentors on slack you can meet them so it, it's going to be a really cool thing so i'm going to try react.js which i think will be really cool because i like front end and it has um python and django stuff in it as well so i think that's, that'll be really cool um well, I'm I'm building a a tech start tech startup at the moment. Um, so we will be using Ruby and Rails. Um, I'm also organizing a Guinness World Record attempt for most handstands in a group for International Handstand Day. Um, but it's also a global um, a global day. So we have um, we have started recruiting different ambassadors um, for Instagram to help spread the word about the handstand day. And we actually want to um, find a way to track the data on their hashtags and have like one central location. So we want to build something um, to actually track that because we think that would be a little bit um, pretty fun and be able to like give them prizes for um, you know, posting handstands and making the coolest handstands. So yep. that's what we that's what I'll be using the technology and the skills that I learned with. I'm going to be a lot more patient with software engineers that I work with. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, so where where I'm working, um, the the um, software engineer, uh, he, he helps to generate um, market reports and everything using Django and Python. And I was like, hey, I, I understand what you're doing <laughs> a little bit more now. And, and I, think, I think as much as I'm not going to be doing it, um, it's definitely going to help a lot more with just bridging that gap between people who don't know anything about tech and those that are in, in that space. Um, so, so hopefully that will just make projects are a little bit easier for everyone. Okay, what about, so we know what you're doing, what about Sinti, you can share a little bit more. So uh, for now, uh, still planning to stay in my current company, so what I'm going to do, I think I will try to build a system to help to solve my current uh, work issue. So hope that by doing this, I will be able to uh, accumulate some experience and be really sure that uh, coding is really for me before I venture into the yeah the field. Okay. Does anyone else have a question? Okay, I'm I'm coming to you. Hi, sorry, um, it's not so much uh, geared towards the panel, but towards the organizers as well. Because we just want to know what was the details of your bootcamp, like what was the frequency like, um, how often were you guys coding, and what was the criteria for choosing these nine beautiful, amazing ladies for, you know, just about to spend for the next round. So I think maybe the panel can take you know what what happened during the program. One of you want to get it. <laughs> <laughs> so for us, it's actually a eight weeks uh, part time program. So we normally communicate with each other by Slack, and every week we will meet up on Saturday to actually discuss further uh, more about our projects. Or we will actually uh, our mentors will have some class from a, for us to actually learn up all the basic because most of us started off with for example me myself I don't know Ruby at all before I joined this program so yeah we need to actually catch up with some basic so that's what we basically do yeah. 
Yeah, I think um, there's a lot of self-learning in the beginning. Yeah, so if you, if you start from like zero, right, you'll be spending a lot of time, a lot of nights like online on Code Academy and just trying to absorb whatever you can. And then uh, when you come together on every Saturday, um, it's just to kind of like plan what to do for the next week ahead. And then every week you spend about 10 hours or so, depending on how slow or fast you are. Yeah, and just uh, coding on your own and trying to figure out what's the task um, for the week. Uh, how you can complete the task for the week. Yeah. So it's 10 hours per week. Uh, 10, 10 hours a week. Yeah, uh, is it 10 hours a week? Maybe more. <laughs> for me, it's more than 10 hours per week. Imagine when you are debugging, maybe one hour pass, and then two hours, and three hours. So uh, it's not included your self-learning time. Maybe it takes about three hours for watching videos, um, call uh, any website you want, and then uh, you need to spend uh, three more hours to practice, and then maybe uh, three more hours for debug debugging, and then you still have some homework to fi uh, need to finish. So, um, but it depends on everyone because some people they might learn it very fast and pick up very fast. But for me, I need to uh, slowly and find out how to solve my problems. So I will say it takes about uh, 12 hours a week, not included uh, Saturday meetup. How so, long Saturday? Saturday, yeah. it basically is about three hours uh, course, but after course, maybe your team will have some meetup to discuss about your uh, project because the course is not included in the project. Uh, they will teach you the basic things, but when you need to apply it, of course, you need to discuss with your coach about how to apply it or uh, maybe it's a, a bit different from uh, uh, what they want you to do. So uh, Saturday basically maybe takes about four hours for everything basically. So total will be 16 hours a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so it's for me only. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it really varies. Um, so we meet every Saturday just for hands-on and debugging. Um, and through the week, they are expected to also be coding and also be producing code. So as for the selection criteria, we're still fine-tuning fine the process. So I'm not going to say anything for now. <laughs> okay, someone else here has a question just now. No more? Is it the same question? Anyone else wants to ask a question? Can Ben join? No. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's. Oh, um, I'm sorry, Mike. So, are you confident of building your own application, uh, web application now, like probably out of a scale of 10? How confident are you to create something for your friend? Just quickly go down the road, say the number. <laughs> you have to explain. Ten. Oh, so ten for kids. No. <laughs> uh, maybe nine. Oh. If not confident enough, I will ask someone. Yeah, that's that's the reason I left one. <laughs> I would say about like nine as well. Yeah, but of course I will need some help from my friends and stuff. And Stack Overflow. <laughs> Similarly, if I get a lot, a lot of help from Martin, I would say 10. <laughs> and a lot of Googling. Stack Overflow is really, really good. So, um, yeah, like, you you just can't do something through memory. You just have to Google, you have to find out, you have to try. So I don't think it really has a number, but it's more of your commitment and your willingness. Um, is my friend going to pay me? <laughs> Um, I guess my confidence level is really high. Um, I think the program ac actually um, helped me strengthen my growth mindset. So I, I would say a 10, because I think that I can probably program anything. Not right now, but it would take a while, but yeah, I can do it. With lots of help from Martin, um, <laughs> I would give myself a, a nine. Um, 
if it was me in complete isolation without Stack Overflow or any mentors, then that number would be a lot lower. Um, but having said that, I think that anyone that's coding actually does end up looking for help and going to Stack Overflow and, and there's so many resources out there, so no one really seems to code in isolation. Uh, I would also say 9 or 10 if let's say I get helps from mentors. <laughs> and also I put it enough effort because yeah I think after the program I realized that we can actually build something as long as we put enough efforts and yeah if let's say we don't know then we just ask or Google. So you guys know that by saying all that's nine and ten, a lot of people are expecting you guys to do apps already. Like all of your friends will be like, hey, I thought you know how to code. <laughs> you know. Anyway, so let's close out this panel with one last question. What would be one advice you give to people who are learning how to code? even thing or whether it's just myself like I think the confidence even when you know some you think you don't know enough and but, but yeah it's, so it's a confidence issue thing but when you do see like um, you know when you, but you're comparing yourself like to the experts but then again when I see the experts I realize that they don't know everything as well and so it's always like, you know you, you feel like there's always someone bigger and it's to have that confidence like, you know, to know what you know and know that you can be better and everyone else is just trying to be the same as well. Yeah. I would say have a little bit more patience, no matter for yourself or uh, to others. Yeah, have a little bit more patience because everyone uh, learns step by step. So. Don't blame and uh, don't blame yourself. No matter you you feel oh, oh my god how come I learn so slow? But it's okay. Just take your time, patience. Yeah. Um, for me, I would say start out a project as soon as possible. Because for me, is that I spent too much time learning like how each command works. So it became very fragmented and everything is like everywhere. And then like if you get to like spend more time on a project and everything it forces you to learn faster. I like to be very independent so I like to try googling for answers first. So I would say exploit your mental. <laughs> I think I was really really shy about um, approaching Martin at the start so I had, I had a lot of errors and I sort of didn't really know where I went wrong or what I should be doing or I would have maybe a more complicated uh, code for something that can be simplified. Some of the things, like you shouldn't try to reinvent the wheel that much, you should really just try to ask people because everyone is really very nice in the tech community. Um, one piece of advice I would, I would give to people trying to learn really any new skill is to actually document the learning. Um, that helps you reflect on things that you've learned, especially if you feel like you're stuck and you, you suck and like, you know, you just want to crawl into a hole. But if you, you know, reflect on the things that you've learned and, you know, like six months, you're like, whoa, they came so far. Um, it's really like, you know, when athletes like train, they document what they've done and, and you know, the, how fast they've run a race and they always try to get better and better and better. And I think that is, um, um, a, a huge part of it. So if you document the learning um, and you review that, um, it's also a great way to share with other people what you're learning. Um, so that's the one piece of advice that I would have. I, I would say, uh, yeah, very early on, think about what it is you actually want to build um, because that gives you a lot more direction um, and and gives you something I guess to aim towards and, and it helps to really kind of direct your learning um, rather because there's so much out there that you can learn but if you're not actually creating anything uh, you can get really sidetracked uh, so it's, I think it's better just to know exactly what it is you want to make. All right awesome thank you so much panel. Ladies will be
standing up after the event. So if there's anything you were too shy to ask, you can go ahead and ask them. Okay, back to me. Okay, so um, this is the, the stuff that some of you are interested in, like what, what, what are we going to do next? So we're planning for the next boot camp to happen from August to November. As you can see, this is more than eight weeks. I'll tell you a bit more later. So our our next our next activity is this uh, group, uh, this tech ladies tech talks. So it's gonna be you know just people with the Ruby skills and sharing their knowledge, and it's gonna be in about two weeks time. So I have all of your email addresses, so I'll just email you about more of the details later. Uh, or you can just sign up for our mailing list. Laser! Yeah. Okay, so the thing that you really want to hear about is the, the second iteration of the boot camp. So we're going to make this longer by two weeks, so it will be a 10 week program. And we're going to start in September. So why did I say August earlier? Because we're going to have a pre workshop, boot, a pre boot camp workshop in August. Just to help you know, prep you out for in terms of the foundation, um, get you prepped out ready to start on the project. So again, more details in terms of the selection criteria, how the workshop is going to be like. It will come much later. So do make sure that you're on the mailing list for to keep yourself in in the loop. And I think it's not working. Tell people to take note that your is sensitive. Oh yes, the, the URL is case sensitive, so make sure you just, just take a photo of this and then you just type exactly the same and you'll be fine. <laughs> so another thing that I really, really want to highlight is that um, for, the, for this boot camp, you know, 129 people sign up, we could only take nine. The thing is that I would love to help everyone if I could. The thing is that I have uh, constraints in my resources as well. But as someone once told me, you know, the community really wants you to succeed. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of other community groups. Um, some of them are also here. I think Girls in Tech, Coding Girls is here. Ruby Meetup, Cop uh, Copy JS is here. So maybe you just like, could you just like maybe stand up or do a little wave? Yeah. So these are all the people who are running community meetups. And you know, there are awesome people doing everything volunteer basis. So if there's anything that you're interested in, you know, just just hound them. And don't give up don't give up programming just because you didn't get in a boot camp, okay? Okay, and that's all for today. Woo! Yeah, so I'm so glad that all of you came out here. So um, just Talk to us, like if you want more information about the program, or just talk to the community people, and you'll just have fun. Thank you so much. Yay.